and welcome to Poker News. A highly controversial bill has been passed in the States, which proposes a total ban on internet gaming. The bill, which received a comfortable 317 to 93 margin, will now move up to Senate, where the debate is set to hot up. Described as the crack cocaine of gambling by Republicans in the US, online poker and casino rooms have been steadily targeted over the last few months in the lead-up to this bill, which is somewhat unsurprising. Most controversially, in a Big Brother style reminiscent of George Orwell's 1984, the bill proposes that banks be given the responsibility of flagging up customers attempting to use online gaming services with their credit and debit cards. If this is passed, this infringement of civil liberties will throw a massive shadow of doubt over the all-American concept of freedom, making it more a case of free to do what we tell you. Already in the state of Washington, online gambling carries the same level of punishment as sexually related offences. However, officials in Washington have stated it's unlikely at this stage that they'll prosecute. Following on from last week's story, the casinos of Atlantic City were reopened at 7 on the morning of July the 8th after a bungled round of budget allocations that led to their closure the week before, the first in the history of Atlantic City. Atlantic City lawmakers couldn't agree on a new budget before the old one expired on July the 1st, which led to New Jersey Governor John S. Corzine ordering all but essential government offices closed until a budget was decided for this fiscal year. Amongst the offices that closed were the state's Casino Control Commission, leaving New Jersey's casino industry without inspectors and thereby forcing them to close. The decision makers finally came to a decision three days into the closure, but casinos had to wait a further four days before reopening while governmental wheels were set in motion. During closures, the usual stream of gamblers quite obviously stayed away, leading to hotel occupancy plunging and casinos and hotel workers losing both wages and tips. According to the Casino Association of New Jersey, at the end of the week, the 12 casinos reported losses of approximately $54 million. Now let's take a look at who has the most amount of cashes at the WSOP since it began in 1970. This is a topical subject, as last week Phil Helmuth broke a record by topping any other player when he made his 50th cash at the WSOP event. However, he has since surpassed his own record and is in the number one spot with a whopping 52 caches. Followed closely behind is Men the Master Nguyen with 51 caches, who has made over 20 final tables in his poker career and came fourth at the WSOP in 96. In the three is TJ Cloutier, who has made 46 caches altogether and recently came fifth in the horse event on the 12th of July, when he cashed a staggering $480,000. In fourth spot is Chris Jesus Ferguson and Barry Johnston, both of which have 44 caches each. Chris Ferguson is famous for winning the WSOP Championships in 2000, when he took home a tasty one and a half million. And Barry Johnston, who's a WSOP champion in 86, also made four final tables in the same year. And finally, in fifth is five times bracelet winner Eric Seidel, who finished in fourth place in the WSOP Championships in 99. If we're unlucky, soon we might not be able to take money off American fish in online games rooms. This is down to a bill the US government are trying to push through to ban online gaming. So if the government over there do get their way, how will that affect the industry as a whole? They'll find a way around it. Um, I think it'd be a big shame because obviously there's a lot of Americans playing online at the moment. So it'll, take, it'll make the poker rooms a lot quieter online. Less players probably, more, less learners. I think, to be honest, the game on the internet has really took it by the, by the neck and made it popular, to be honest. So I think it's a good thing that it's been on the internet, but then again, there's more gamblers, more addicts. So it could work both ways, to be honest. And finally, part James Bond, part Humphrey Bogart, the suave and charming Sammy Farha, who was famously beaten by Chris Moneymaker three years ago, has come out on top at this year's WSOP. Beating Phil Ivey off the top spot in the $5,000 buy-in Omaha High-Low Split World Championship, Farha won himself a cool $398,000. That's all from me. I'll see you next time.